Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. That Girl is an American TV series that ran on ABC from September of 1966 to March of 1971, and it starred Marlo Thomas as the title character Anne Marie, who was an aspiring but only sporadically employed actress who moves from her hometown of Brewster, New York, to try to make it big in New York City. She takes on a number of offbeat temp jobs to support herself in between her various auditions and bit parts. This was one of the very first sitcoms to focus on an unmarried woman who was not a domestic or living with her parents. It was a forerunner of the Mary Tyler Moore show. Ted Bissell played her boyfriend, Donald Hollinger, who is a writer for Newsview magazine. Lou Parker and Rosemary DeCamp played Lou Marie and Helen Marie, her concerned parents. Bernie Capel and Ruth Buzzy played Ann and Donald's friends. The show was developed by writers Bill Persky and Sam Denoff, who had served as head writers on The Dick Van Dyke Show, which Marlo Thomas's father, Danny Thomas, co-produced. The series reflected changing times in America, especially with women. Marlo Thomas's goofy charm, together with Bissell's dry wit, made this show a really strong performer for ABC television throughout the entire five-year run of the series. By the end of the 69-70 season, the show was still doing moderately well in the ratings. But after four years, Marlo Thomas had grown tired of the series, and she wanted to move on. ABC then convinced her to do one more year. In the beginning of the fifth season, Don and Ann became engaged, but they never actually married. The decision to leave the couple engaged at the end of the run of the show was largely Marlo Thomas's idea. She didn't want to send a message to young women that marriage was the ultimate goal for them, and she worried that this happening might undercut the true meaning of the show. Every episode started with a cold opening. The dialogue would always turn to Anne, as one of the characters would make an assertive reference to her as that girl. The camera would freeze frame on a surprised Anne. This was followed by the opening credits and the theme music. The way the show got started was that Marlo Thomas was approached by an ABC executive who had seen a screen test that she had done for a failed pilot. He was interested in her because he felt like he could feature her in a new project. He gave her several scripts to read, none of which she liked, as they all focused on a woman who was either a traditional girlfriend, wife, or secretary to someone else. She wanted the show in which she would be the main character to be shown as a young, modern woman focused on her own dreams and aspirations. Although she was never officially credited as such, she was also really the de facto executive producer of the show through her company, Daisy Productions, which she formed specifically for this series. Originally, she wanted to name the sitcom Miss Independent because she was given that nickname by her parents. The series actually used three separate opening themes during its run. Season one was a more subtle instrumental opening, also with a different video sequence. And seasons two through four was the now familiar, more upbeat, jazzy, swinging instrumental style. And finally, sung lyrics were added in the fifth season's version to give the opening a similar, deeper context in the wake of the new, very successful Mary Tyler Moore show, which had just had its first season the previous year. 
the well-regarded Earl Hagen wrote all the music for the opening themes. Besides writing the themes to numerous other shows, Hagen is most notable for writing the tune to and whistling the theme for the Andy Griffith Show. In the original unaired pilot, Ted Bissell's character was named something totally different. He was named Donald Blue Sky, not Hollinger, and he played Ann's agent instead of a magazine reporter. During the episode, he explains that his last name is from his heritage of being part Cherokee Indian. And during this pilot, Harold Gould played Ann's father and Penny Stanton played Ann's mother. That running gag of having the pre-credit sequence ending with that character referring to Anne as that girl was originally only supposed to be used in that pilot episode, as it was believed that they would never be able to keep finding ways to work it into the conversation. But they did, and it ended up being used in almost all the episodes. Marlowe has often stated that the relationship between her character Anne on the show and her father Lou was loosely based on her real-life relationship with her father Danny Thomas. The series and the Dick Van Dyke show shared several commonalities. Marlowe Thomas's father Danny Thomas was the producer of the Van Dyke show. And as I mentioned earlier, that girl creators, Bill Persky and Sam Denoff, served as the head writers for that show. Both shows were also filmed at Desilu Studios. And quite often, props from the Dick Van Dyke show appeared on that girl. And that girl writers even adapted storylines from the Dick Van Dyke show for quite a few episodes. Rosemary DeCamp plays Anne's mother in the series. She was a popular radio, film, and television star in her own right during the 40s and 50s. But one of the things that she's most remembered for happened on July 7, 1946, in her Beverly Hills home. That home was terribly damaged when it was struck by the plane that Howard Hughes was flying when it crashed into not only her house, but two others. Luckily, she wasn't hurt, but parts of the plane landed in her bedroom where her and her husband were sleeping. All of this happening was recreated in the 2004 movie, The Aviator, which was the story of Howard Hughes's life. Go back and watch an episode of That Girl. It's a really well-done show. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.